computational medicine is the science of using computational modeling and computational approaches and applying them in the clinic for the treatment of patients. Um, there are many challenges, of course, um, in this new discipline. Um, the first and probably biggest challenge is the acceptance of this new approach in the clinic. However, with the advancement in precision medicine, which really individualizes all patient treatment, or the goal is to individualize all patient treatment, we believe this computational medicine will actually uh, will be much more welcome and well accepted in the clinic. In a way, computational medicine formalizes a process that a clinician has in his or her head, which is the, the experience. Every clinician has a mental model in their head about what constitutes an appropriate diagnosis or appropriate treatment for a given set of symptoms. And using computational medicine, we can formalize that and make it um, into a tool in which can be used equally by a large number um, of physicians with an equal outcome, as long as it is personalized to the patient. Uh, that is very true. The language is really, really different. And if you put in a room uh, a mathematician or an engineer with a clinician that have never talked before, it's like they're talking at two completely different levels. And so it has always been a challenge. But developing a common language is the first step in having collaborations with clinicians and bringing computational medicine to the bedside in the clinic. Um, I believe that it is more important that engineers and mathematicians are the ones who learn the clinical language because it is the ultimate goal is to help patients. So in helping patients, you have to be equipped to express how your tools are going to be used in the clinic. So um, I personally train all my students to speak clinical language. They go to clinical meetings. They are equally well-versed in both the mathematics and engineering computation as well as in the clinical language. That is very important. I think if we have here in one end the uh, mathematics language and here is the clinical language, our goal is to get the mathematics as close to the clinic. And once we get there and the clinicians start to understand what we are doing, then they start to also um, incorporate some of our terms in their language and then we move a little bit so it's not always all of us going 100 percent it's going to end up being 75 percent but we first have to go all the way to the clinician side um yeah we have some real life examples we have um done the ultimate study is a prospective study in which you treat the patient or you predict diagnosis based on simulations only. And we have done that in two cases. Uh, one was for ventricular arrhythmias in patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy. And that was in um, Nature Biomedical Engineering published last year, exactly a year ago in which we predicted uh, where to ablate these patients and in five patients the treatment was driven by computer simulations. The even more exciting was our recent paper that came up, um, came out about two weeks ago maybe or now or um, which is also in Nature Biomedical Engineering where we um, basically drove patient treatment um, in a more complex arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation, and this was specifically for patients who have like remodeling in the atria, fibrotic remodeling, and in that study was entirely prospective, and we did 10 patients in which the treatment, which is ablation therapy, was entirely guided by simulations. There was no other measurement, there were no clinical measurements taken, entirely driven by simulation. So these are good examples in an interventional um, cardiology of applying um, methodologies like that. I have said that many, many times. My recommendation is don't take no for an answer. 
No, you cannot. You have to stand up for what you want to do. You have to find how to get to the goal that you want, despite criticism, negative um, attention, all kinds of obstacles that often are in the pathway of a woman trying to achieve a high career or to um, reach a, um, a lofty research goal. So this always is going to be happening, although hopefully societal mores are changing. But for me, the most important thing is never to give up. That's what I want to say. Don't take no for an answer. Get up. Even if you have a rejection, if you have fallen for whatever reason, get up, move forward. Don't take no for an answer. Um, so, it's we always think that the same care should be available to all patients. And one would want to think that if computational methodologies are brought into the clinic, there will be many processes that would be automated and would not rely on a highly trained operators that might be um, available only in certain hospitals. Like, for instance, yesterday I had a conversation on the phone with somebody in Pakistan. And then for them, if you automate a reading of an MRI, is a huge difference. Um, you know, if you have like a machine learning or something to read the, the MRI, it's a huge difference because they cannot pay the money to train people to read the MRIs. And it would be so much easier and so much more beneficial to them if they can press a button and something is done or a, like a, a number is spit it out. So that would make a huge difference to everywhere in the world and particularly in you know, low, middle, low income countries, everywhere in the rural communities, everything would be much better if we can do that.